Today's required practical is practical four, and it's titled Investigation into the Effect of a Named Variable on the Permeability of Cell Surface Membranes. The cell surface membranes that we're going to use are that of beetroot. The named variable will be the concentration of alcohol. And how we're going to measure the disruption or the permeability is that when the membrane of beetroot cells break down, they release their pigment. We can then decant the alcohol containing the pigment and we can use a colorimeter and measure the absorbance through it. And that will give us an idea of how leaky those cells have become. So to measure how leaky, how permeable the cell surface membranes have become, we need to first of all produce a calibration curve. And that's what I'm doing here. Um, I've used a grater to produce a standard thickness discs of the beetroot. And I'm now using a cork borer to produce discs which will go into the speaker. I need to produce 20 discs. When I've got my discs in my beaker, I'm then going to add 20 mils of ethanol. This is the alcohol that I'm going to use. And I'm using 100% alcohol. Of course, the beetroot should be fresh. It shouldn't be frozen because when you freeze it, those cells are going to burst anyway and be disrupted. So best to ensure fresh beetroot that's not been pre-packed or frozen or cooked. It's proper raw beetroot. The cork borer I'm going to use is a six millimetre and the, using the grater is going to ensure that they're about two millimetres thick. I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes I'm just simply going to decant it into another beaker. This is now my stock solution. I now need to make 5 mils of 6 different concentrations. The concentrations will range from 0, concentration of extract, to 100%. So in the tube that I'm labelled 0, I'm going to put 0 volume of beetroot extract. In the next tube, I'm going to put one mil of beetroot extract and four mils of water. This, of course, then makes a 20% solution and so on. Okay, so I'm just finishing labelling my tubes there. As it says in the table, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. I'm also going to label my beakers so I don't get confused. And you can see I've already labelled the lids of my cuvette. So now I'm going to take a syringe and the plunger and I'm going to start withdrawing the liquid that I need. So in the first one, it's just going to be five mils of water. In the second one, I'm going to put one mil of my stock solution. You can see there, one mil into the second test boiling tube and then I'm going to take four mils of my water, making sure I don't cross contaminate and I uh, keep one syringe to one beaker. There's that. Okay, the next one I'm going to put two mils of my beetroot stock solution extract and I'm going to put three mils of the water. Next one I'm going to put three mils of my stock solution, two mils of the water. And then in the last one, no, it's not the last one, I've got to put four mils and one mil. And in the last one, I'm just going to put five mils of my stock solution. Okay, the next thing to do is to calibrate the colorimeter. Okay, so you can see now I'm pouring distilled water into the cuvette. The cuvette has got two smooth sides and two ribbed sides and you're going to hold it on the ribbed side. You want to make sure that there's no fingerprints on the smooth side because that's going to change the absorbance. You can set the wavelength of light passing through it at 565 nanometers. The light shines through from the rear and you want it to go through the clear sides and so that's why you're holding the cuvette that way. You just close the lid and for this time you're going to press that button there, Cal. Cal for calibrate and you'll leave it a minute 
and we can see that the data logger is registering zero. So that's good, that's calibrated. Job done. Okay, we can take that out now. And we're going to work our way through the different cuvettes with the different concentrations of stock solutions. So the first one, again, we expect this to be zero because this has no beetroot pigment in there. So I'm just going to carefully pour that in, put the lid on it. Again, making sure I'm not touching the smooth sides. I'm holding it on the ribbed side. I'm going to take some tissue and give that a wipe there so that all my fingerprints are off and it's not got any liquid dripping around on there. I'm not going to change the way I hold it. I'm going to hold it the same. Just make sure it's clear of fingerprints. In it goes. Close the lid. I don't have to press anything at this point, but what you will see is that nothing changes because it's pure water, like when you just calibrated it back to zero. It's a little bit like when you stand on the scales. Before you get on them, you put them to zero, and that's exactly what that's done. And that first reading has just checked that. Taking the second one, I'm going to pour that in. And this time when we put it in, we will expect to see um, a change on the colorimeter reading for the absorbance. Lid goes on. Just give that a wipe, make sure there's no fingerprints on there, make sure there's no liquid, give it all a good clean. In it goes, close the lid. Again, don't have to press any buttons, but you can see straight away that the reading on the um, data logger is changing. When it settles down to round about, you can then take a reading from that. Okay, so write that down. That's 0.286, put that into the table. And then we just lift the lid to remove that and put it back in place so we can keep track of where we are. Give it a shake because you might have some starchy bits. It may be a little bit cloudy, your stock solution, and we want a representative sample. And we're working quickly. We're working quickly because as that is sitting, look at me cleaning it again. As it's sitting there, the ethanol is evaporating. And of course, that's making your stock solution and certainly the concentrations that you've made change in terms of their concentration. I've put it in, I've put the lid down and I'm just waiting for the data logger to settle down and I can take that reading and record it again at the base of my table because the AQA table that we were given actually doesn't include it. Okay, take that out, put it back again, give it a shake, make sure it's homogenous, make sure that it's representative of the full sample. Holding the cuvette on the rib side, put the lid on, which is also marked, making sure it's dry, putting it in the, um, the colorimeter the correct way, letting the light shine through it, waiting for the data logger to settle down, and then again, take the reading. Then we continue to do this for the next concentrations. We're then going to plot the results using Microsoft Excel. And what we'd expect is a linear line, um, but in fact, we've got some anomalies on this. We're gonna do the line of best fit, and then just gonna fiddle about there to make the line of best fit the dominant line and supersede the other line. 